cube maps are Valve's way of making reflections. Instead of ray tracing or calculating them in real time in some way, shiny objects get their reflections from a picture stored in the map file itself. The reflection pictures are taken when you enter the build cube maps command in the console, so they won't change regardless of what happens around them during gameplay. Objects and brushes get their reflections from the nearest cube map from them by default, though you can force them to get reflections from others. Once you have built the cube maps for your map, it will record it onto the BSP file so that anybody it's shared with will be able to see the reflections without having to build it themselves. Be sure to share the BSP that's in your CSGO maps folder, as this is the only one that will be updated. If you recompile your map, it needs to be built again. The short answer is, if it looks okay, it's okay. The only time you should really be worrying is if your sniper is reflecting completely the wrong surroundings, or if something seems to be glowing and you don't want it to. I've noticed that CSGO has fewer reflective surfaces than, say, Counter-Strike Source, so you might not even run into many problems. The main place that you can find dodgy reflections is in the AWP scope, so it may help to run about with this out. The console command Impulse81 works in some games and gives you a beautiful shiny cube to test the surroundings, though I really think that the AWP scope is more relevant for real world testing, particularly in maps with static props, like CSGO has. This really depends on your level. The map I'm demonstrating them in is the worst case scenario with a lot of contrast. Generally, the placement doesn't have to be too precise. I would say to add one into the middle of each area or room in your level, generally 64 units off the floor, since this is head height for players, and so it will reflect more closely what players will see in that part of the level. Nothing terrible will happen by not doing this, as it's very approximate anyway. Just be sure that they're at least 16 units away from solid objects, otherwise it will mess up the reflection, as if it's taking pictures through whatever it's close to. The exception is high contrast areas, where there's a dark place next to a very bright one. In this case, if there are shiny floors, walls or ceilings, Place the cube map in the darkest part of the room, as less shiny reflections are a lot better than over-the-top reflections like this here. If the floors, walls and ceilings aren't shiny, you only have to worry about scope reflections and the props in the room. I would use common sense here and see if it looks okay. If you have a doorway, make sure that you have a cube map either side, an equal distance away, as this will make the transition on the weapon model the moment the player steps through the door. For windows, you can make a cube map specifically for them, since they tend to be in weird, high-up places and are quite shiny. Place is about 32 units in front of the window and it should automatically pick it up. For distant water, or cheap textures, Source uses a cube map to determine the water's reflections. Place the cube map above the surface of the water and it should take care of the rest itself. Using a water underscore LOD entity will let you adjust the distance that proper reflections should be replaced with the cheap ones. Say you want something in a dark place to be shiny, or if a texture just isn't reflecting a nearby cube map that you want it to, you double click on the cube map, Select Brush Faces, then choose the faces that should use the cube map for their reflections. You could assign a cube map in a bright place to something that you want to look as though it's glowing in a dark part of the level, or if your level benefits from an Unreal style glow to everything. I'm pleased you asked, as I really wanted an excuse to do this! Each bit of the ground is cut up and gets their reflections from the cube map directly above or below it. As a result, the reflections look really pretty, and light isn't shown going through walls or anything. The downside is that a 550 kilobyte map is now over 20,000 kilobytes, and it's only a very small map. It also takes ages to compile the reflections, and makes the design of the map generally messy, which has several knock-on effects. In short, don't do this, because there are a lot more useful and efficient ways of making a map look good without resorting to brute force tactics such as this one. Me too! I went back to the original version of this map, and with five carefully placed cube maps, managed these results. Granted, they're not as precise, but the map was only 600 kilobytes in size, and seriously, what do you expect from me? In practice, it's not normally too obvious, since there's loads of rubbish all over the map disguising the seams, and people are normally too busy shooting each other, and generally playing the game to notice something like this. CS goes to Dust 2 had some bad transitions, but we can all forgive them for that. In the open courtyard, I put it closer to the floor. This way it reflects less of the sky, since surrounding it are towering walls. This helps when you're doing this, since the walls now block out the reflections when you're at a shallow angle like this. For the dark areas inside the transitional places, I would put the cube maps in the darkest part of the area, away from light sources. You could argue that this limits the effectiveness of shiny surfaces, but I'd argue that it's better than the two alternatives, ridiculously bright reflections, or none at all. The number of words, length of this video, and general tone may make you think that cube maps are complicated, but they're really not. Just place them in your level, and if they don't work, see if anything mentioned in this video can help. Have fun!